Yo, big shot south to Orfano. Congrats for raising over 300,000 for orphans. Keep up the good work, guys, man. You guys are changing lives, and you got my support for life, man. Please continue doing what you're doing. This is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And our sponsors at Alpha Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company, get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. I really appreciate you joining me today. Every story is it individual, and I have to make that decision when I receive the information, how much of it is allowed to be discussed without jeopardizing a trial or somebody's freedom. And the newspapers and the mainstream media are notorious for doing that over the years. But in relation to this story, it's very different because cryptocurrency is an unregulated community and there is no legal consequences to actual frauds that occur in the community. So when you lose money investing in a coin, nobody can be arrested. So in that regard, I can talk about this as much as I like and nobody is at risk of any incrimination. Whether this is right or wrong is a matter of opinion that I would like to hear from you. But in this episode, I will be showing evidence of how a company have misled and ripped off using the identities of a charity. This story started on Twitter when a journalist retweeted called Jim Waterson. He noticed that the BBC had done an article on a young man that said that he'd turned £50 at 20 years old into £5.9 million using cryptocurrency. He's from the Birmingham area and they also say that he forgot to mention that he set up a crypto coin that was shut down in October. But from what I can see from checking through the coin history is that the coin is actually still in circulation in a very small amount, but it is still about. And in this episode, I would also reveal how they've created other coins. So this was the initial tweet that I seen. And when you click on the article for the BBC, they've removed it and they've not mentioned anything to do with it. It then began to circulate that the BBC had pulled this documentary about rags to riches due to the fact the millionaire was accused of scamming his followers. The BBC are yet to even speak about it. They haven't offered a redaction. This was half an hour before the programme was meant to air. And of course, it's left a lot of people asking why they didn't do it. What I found is an article from CoinMarketCap in reference to what they believe the reasons as to why they took it down. But first, I'm going to read the article that the BBC deleted. So this is a rough idea of what this documentary would have been about. And then I will read the reasons as to why they believe it was taken down. So the article that was deleted that I've managed to recover through archives said that a 20-year-old made millions trading cryptocurrency and he's set to open a food bank to give back to his community in Birmingham. Hanad Hassan made an investment of £50 apparently in cryptocurrency last year and within three months he's now worth $1 million which translates, if true, to three quarters of a million pound. They said he then dropped out of university to focus on trading in the field and I learned that he studied computer science and his co-founder of the company Ahmed Mo studied marketing. So together both of them had the abilities to be able to launch something like this. Mr Hassan it said in the article now wants to focus his wealth to help people. A cryptocurrency he set up to support charities has already seen that more than £200,000 be sent to good causes and he's looking to use his funds further to fund the food bank in his hometown of Birmingham. But Birmingham isn't a town, it's a city. And I'm assuming this is what the documentary would have been based around is the fact that he's going to, apparently going to do this. They then go on to highlight the risks around trading in crypto. And this is where I've started to notice that the BBC are trying to jump on this trend of understanding crypto. But clearly, whoever did this whole documentary and program had no idea what they was doing because this whole thing is just lies. Everything in this article is lies. And I'm going to show you how it's lies and also exclusive information as to why I do know it is. It goes on to say in the article that was deleted that it's not always been this way. Hassan was born in Somalia and his family left the African nation to provide a different future for Mr. Hassan and his five siblings. They arrived in Birmingham at 14 years old and their background he described as modest. His father Omar tried to bring his family to a better place as their life in Somalia was not very good. They were kids from war and they wanted to come to a safe place. It then says in the article, since deleted, that despite his wealth, Mr. Hassan is conscious of the struggles of other people and he and his friend Ahmed Mohammed set up the cryptocurrency to donate large amounts of the profits to charity and they have donated over 200 grand. This is what they've said again and this isn't true. Like I'm going to tell you how this isn't true. And the fact that they're manipulating the need for people to be involved in charities and to donate and to help people but he's known as scumbag behaviour. 
it then goes on to say Mr. Mohammed teamed up with a man called Mr. Hamid who founded the charity Bearded Bros and the Salma Food Bank in Smevik, just outside of Birmingham. So this is something I didn't know, and I'm aware that Bearded Bros live in Birmingham, so I'm going to contact them to get an idea of their involvement in this charity. They then go on to say some statistics about food banks that have occurred in the area, and he said that they've given back ideas and want to help out a lot. So that was the general idea of the article that the BBC did on him. The BBC were trying to portray them as charity workers and they've done a lot of good. And of course, I do need to verify with the Bearded Bros what they did there. And I'll get back to you, but I've spoken to other charities and they have actually dismissed any involvement. What I found first in the search of the archives was their website. They've deleted the website. This is what happens when they rip people off. They delete all the social medias so that it's hard for you to find out what happened. They used a picture from Banksy, which I guarantee you he didn't give permission for, to sell the coin. And the whole marketing around the coin was based on the fact that they'd be helping orphans. And on the website, I was even managed to recover details of the charities they apparently donated to. And one of these charities was called Help Your Team. And this is a genuine charity that helps orphan children abroad in Syria and other countries. And what I found out is the creators of this token, who are two boys from Birmingham City University, actually did a live stream with this charity, telling them that was going to give them £35,000. They also published on their website that they had give the charity £35,000. And also BBC News said that. I have since been able to discover from getting in touch with the charity that they made no such donation. They've never actually donated to the charity ever so this is massive. This proves that these two young men have basically ripped off a charity. They've promised money to a charity. They've used the charity as a way to market their business. People was joining in and getting involved because they believed that charities were going to benefit. Rafano, let's change the world. Earn rewards for the best charity token on Binance Smart Chain. A unique coin molded by the community, looking to benefit the lives of orphans in the poorest countries. 40,000 plus holders, $500,000 plus raised, tokenomics, 2% charity, 2% redistribution, 2% auto liquidity. Join us today. It's confirmed, Amir Khan has now partnered up with Ulfano, and he was thanking us all over his social. We've just smashed 30k holders, and we've just fed 50,000 people. We've also helped raise money for children in Sudan. This is one of the only coins out there for a good cause, so please check out Ulfano. Soon we are going to break all-time highs, you don't want to miss this one. And now I've got hard evidence from the actual charity themselves to state that they're not actually received any money from this company. And due to this, I'm trying to promote this real charity, and also I'm going to donate along with Alpha Claims and Hire, and I'm going to publish the real details and get a video with the charity to prove that we've done this, and I'll post it on the socials tomorrow. And I'd really appreciate it if anybody else would support their work and what they do and follow them online at Help Your Team. In relation to the backlash since the BBC dropped the documentary, there's literally been not much. There's only one article I can find about it. And this was on CoinMarketCap. They said that the BBC quietly dropped the documentary about a British man who became become a millionaire trading in cryptocurrencies. And they said that this turned out to be a scam. In an article that has since been taken down, the broadcasters told the story of Hanan Hassan, who said that he went from £50 to £50 million. So they sort of reiterate what was said in the article initially. They then say in this article that he spent two hundred and seventy grand, but the BBC article said that he spent two hundred grand. So I'm not sure why the numbers are different. Although the BBC doesn't reveal the name of the project, he was listed as the founder of Orfano X and said that it was a safe token that was rug pull proof. And rug pull means that somebody's going to steal the money. And obviously for someone to tell you that it's rug pull proof, automatically for me, would be an alarm bell. Several investors involved in Orfano have made claims against action fraud and also to the police. And they said that they've rebranded and relaunched to dump the price and then discontinued it. And they say it's criminal. But of course, there's no financial protection in these coins that you're investing in. This coin had absolutely no real backing, apart from the fact that they paid influencers, like always, to just do voiceovers. And what you have to understand now is that anybody will do something if you pay them money. Stop believing that a coin is real just because somebody that you follow on Instagram has said it is.
So this is the only real backlash that I've seen about the BBC pulling the documentary and not even explaining or putting an apology. So I've been able to find a video where Hassan and Ahmed went on a live with the charity and told them that they was going to donate this money. Donating from the Alfano charity wallet, we're donating 25,000. Me and my co-founder are going to be donating 5,000 ourselves just to... 5,000 each? Yeah, 5,000 so, ourselves, 5, yeah, total. each. Yeah, so um, there'll be 35,000 to help your team. We're going to be set, helping them be our own foundation, which means we will be able to spend the money um, wherever we want and however we want. So we've got a video of them admitting to saying they're going to do it. They've also put it on their website that they did do it. And the charity has confirmed that this did, didn't happen. And what is also strange about this is that Hassan and Mohammed have also put their names down on the coin market website as being the owners of this coin. Usually in things like rug pulls and pump and dumps, People don't usually put their real names, they usually pretend names and the people that are associated to it are actually just in influencers and people that have been paid to participate. But in this case, both of these men have actually took ownership of this. They're saying that they are the ones that have made this coin and they've done this. So it's quite bizarre and I've never seen that done before where people will own it. So because of that fact, I'm definitely going to give them the opportunity to come and explain themselves. They can come onto the channel and we can discuss what they've done and obviously show proof of the fact that they've actually made these donations because as I've found so far from discussing with the charities, they haven't made these donations. And this is something that anyone would believe that the billion dollar company that is the BBC would have verified beforehand. And the final exclusive bit of information that I've got on the channel tonight is the fact that this company has actually not stopped. Three months after the Orfano coin went really low, they created another coin. The wallet that created Orfano then created another coin called Demon. So they took the money from Orfano potentially, I can't be sure, because we don't know how much exactly was in the wallets. But there was definitely a lot of investors. So they took the original coin and the same wallet has created a new coin called Demon. But the worst part about it, that's just satanic as it is. But the worst part about it is they're creating from that same wallet several other coins as well. So this is what you have to really understand in this industry is that years ago there was only a few hundred coins and now there is 17,000 different coins that you can invest in. And of course, a lot of them are going to be rug pulls and people just trying to rip everyone off. And due to the fact that celebrities would endorse it, this is something that I feel is going to become a massive problem. And all I see is people from working class backgrounds and from the council estates that I grew up on losing money from believing the people that are be telling them this. So never feel ashamed if you have invested in something like this to talk about it because it's by telling your friends that it then educates them. And these companies will never stop trying to do this if you don't educate each other because the police can't do anything. The government can't do anything. There's no regulation. The only people that can do something is if we say, do you know what? I think that it's fucked up that you're using a charity that is an orphanage to endorse your company to make money. And then you're not doing what you said you were going to do and donating to them charities. That is scumbag behavior. And at Scar City, we have to discuss this. So I'm going to leave it at that for now. I'm going to do a part two. I've actually got more. And I'm, gonna, I'm sure that there will be a follow-up to this in relation to people getting in touch. And if you have been affected by the Orfano token and have lost money, please get in touch at news at scarcitystudios.com and I'll be back again very shortly with some more news. Peace. And if this story gets taken down, it will be available on the website and all the other social medias. And I'll make sure that I promote it a bit more as well.